Right, here I am for real. Alright, so I'm not sure if I'll be uploading the previous video that I recorded, but uh, just in case, a quick recap, I made, I added some new mods. I know, what a surprise. The person who's addicted to Zelda mo Breath of the Wild mods added more mods. Turns out Hyrule Rebalance is up to version 7 now, apparently. Uh, I, I'm not using that though, Dark Army Resurrection changes enough stuff. I was thinking of getting the armor revamp at least, but like, eh, I'm fine with the Hylian set having that stamina bonus. This game's already absurd enough as it is, both in just difficulty and stuff. Anyway, so upgrading the Tingle set disabled the fit, made the physics not work properly due to the fact that they are normally not supposed to be upgradable in the first place. But uh, I made some changes. Wow. And now it works. Wrong armor. As you can see, the booba jiggles again. Uh. Where is this Hinox? It's gone? Hopefully. Anyway. So I'm thinking of getting some food. I mean at this point I don't really think they'll be necessary anymore, but I'd really like some hot and cold protection. For when I decide to explore the colder and hotter regions of the game again. But uh, I will probably be doing a lot of post-game and DLC because I want to play Dark Army Resurrection for a really long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess at this point The only real food I'm interested in having now is... Well, for one, I'll start with this. The heat resistance. Which, I'll cook those when I finally decide to go to Death Mountain. Now, can I by chance come across a red line, a red maned Lionel, and take a picture of them? I don't think so. Just go. Alright, so yeah, second win. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, patch maker guy. <laughs> Although you advertised it as, as such, it technically works for other mods that do similar things to the armor upgradables. <laughs> Performing 
edition of Big Time. She finally farted after a two hour long tummy ache. <gasps> Rosalina just on intention is a good character. If your friendly neighborhood big lady player is of a higher skill bracket than everyone else, then matches will not even be remotely close because of this little five pointed polygon piss boy right here. Enjoy putting in a lot of work just to get a KO that's not gonna matter. Enjoy being slapped around by a near permanent disjointed hitbox. And most importantly, enjoy having to touch the 24th most come down character according to the power rankings at pool 34. .xxx. Side note, I, I think something's going on here. A few years ago, when I made another video on a on similar topic, this list was what you would expect. It was popular anime, video game characters, drawn a, you know, like, like a fucking hentai sort of art style, right? But now, it's both cartoon characters drawn in large clean art styles that don't translate to it, I don't think. It just seems weird to That's me. Fine. Like, like, I could see people pleasure themselves to stands by the Hyrule Rebound to get rid of Long Throw. Oh my times. god. Like so much yes. Because Rosalina players are so perpetually attached to that little fucking guy, they will spend all of their gameplay and perhaps half their life savings just trying to keep him alive, even though he comes back. And when he's gone, it is full-blown panic mode. A full frontal lobe shutdown until that respawn timer finally graciously allows the game to continue. It's a good thing I have a disposable weapon with me that I don't mind using the durability on. the entire game. Going beyond that, Rosalina's hotter than Peach and Daisy, and you know it's true when you fucking fight me if you don't see his fucking hands. Oh yeah, I'm throwing hands with against you, you son of a motherfucker, fucking bitch, fucking whore, fucking color discriminating, probably. Heterophobic, probably. Role players the world has ever seen. In their mind, the world and odds are stacked against them for every single press of the ready to fight button, regardless of how large the skill gap is between them and the fifth graders they just challenged. There's a chip on the shoulder of anyone who walks in tiny punching boy, and every time a haymaker lands, their brain does a quick calculation of whether or not the digital entity that was just hit felt actual pain from that blow. When the answer is calculated as negative, disappointment sets in. You're gonna be the next Hokage. And also the most normal Pokemon fan to play Smash. Isn't it ironic that the Pokemon designed to be a literal vehicle for self-insert fantasies is played by the most well-adjusted of the professional children's game associates? You've got obsessive tryhards, anti-win fun chasers, malicious psychopaths, children, Squirtle, fetish exhibitionists, casuals, fragile furries, and... You know? Well, okay, I'm gonna leave Incineroar for his turn. But you admittedly gotta be a pretty cool guy to play Greninja. You've gotta be a big could have been fan making... of spamming attacks and mashing buttons until a combo magically appears. But most Bomb important, you gotta hate yourself more than here. any other player. What because the... you will be your own enemy for I the need to get feathers. Game. Your motto in this game is they can't This is straight up the best use for the Choo Choo jellies I keep getting. Record self -destructing is driven by something with also, Beetle South Weapons. Stupid name. Greninja? Really? It's apparently a combination of ninja, which and high rule rebalance. Okay, so, and what more could you want <laughs> than that? Which is French for I gotta play that mod one the of these days. region where Greninja comes from is based on France, so there's some form of logic chain operating behind the scenes, but I have to add this rant to the ballooning video runtime because this is where things get really stupid. In the French version Whoa, of Pokemon, look at they that. don't call this guy Greninja. They don't use a name that uses Grenouille, which you would think would make a lot of sense. Greninja's That's a nice looking name sword. in France is Amphinobi. A combination of amphibian and shinobi, and a 4,000 times better name for this feudal frog fencer than Greninja. Somehow, the French version is better than the version made out of French. Wrap your head around that one, and then wrap your organs around your spinal cord from the repeated impact of smacking the bottom of the stage when you play this guy. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Is that Peter Griffin in Smash? <laughs> oh my god! That's hilarious! That
that is without a doubt one of the funniest things I've Hi. ever seen. I can't tell How if he's you being sarcastic. Such an original... I got pee. The next mod I want to try after Dark Army Resurrection is the Zelda Randomizer. Maybe I'll try it there. Funny idea. Are you a stand-up comedian? You have to be. You know, you know what you should do? You know what you should do? You should use this guy online and put your name as Peter or P. Griffin or Family Guy without a space in it or something like that. That would be absolutely hysterical. The next thing you're gonna tell me, the next thing, the next thing you're gonna show me is that you made another one of like Obama or Steve Harvey or some other pop culture character or person. You know, because you're so funny and you're so clever. Now you, you at least made it yourself, right? You didn't just copy a design from the internet, did you? Because that would spoil all of the magic. You know, the magic of your own creativity and wit and humor and, and your really great ideas. Because you're the only person who ever thought of this before. To make this joke, to, to do this funny thing. And, and it was you who created it. This really, ah! really funny thing you did here. Okay, did you figure out that there's nothing to say about me's yet? They're custom characters. They're, their entire point is to be whatever you it's like trying to make fun of what's in your Christmas stocking first thing Christmas morning. How the fuck are you supposed to know it's in there? Although I will, I will. Ser seriously, no bullshit. I will give you true comedian funny points if you use a me to recreate a fighter that's already in the existing game. Because you have Mario in the game, but then if you're playing online and you run into a me that's named Mario and plays <laughs> exactly the same, that's pretty goddamn funny. Nice. Oh man, 
I fucking hate this bitch. I have written pages upon pages of this document undercutting the idiosyncrasies of Smash Brothers players, but let me tell you the one thing to take away from this video's long runtime. It's one thing I want you to remember above anything else. Montana is absolutely Whoops. everything wrong with this video game. Where do we start? A character that no one asked for, taking up a spot reserved for potential gaming huh. giants, but like the bland as hell personality, oh, the set bonus isn't working because I don't have the set equipment. Fuck you. That Sakurai gets dipped on entering because Get away from the road, you oversized piece of worthless Garbage. Wow, that Hanox must have done something to me in a past life or something. Ah, uh, I think I know. Well, and now it's gonna do something in its next life, or more precisely, more specifically, its afterlife. Stop! Just die. Smash Brothers has a remarkably strong track record in making good choices for entrants, but I think Palutena is my absolute first choice for characters that need to be kicked the fuck off the roster. A committee Why? And Corrin, but I like Palutena. <laughs> She's technically a Smash original character considering her first appearance is in Smash Brawl. But like she's cool. In her one, she's hot. What more could you want than that? Does there really need to be more than that? She looks pretty. Maybe it's Maybelline. Smash Brothers character with the argument of saying I guess I have to now. or have good moves is a terrible defense because you can tweak any character to play however you want. Although techniques are lifted from their respective franchises, how they function in the game is up to the developers first and foremost. Let's take my main man Snake as an example. CQC is a huge part of the Metal Gear Solid series, and yet about 95% of the memorable CQC moves from Metal Gear Solid 3, 4, and five that would fit perfectly into his moveset are nowhere to be found in Smash. Instead, for the sake of gameplay, he was given a sky-high up kick and a double low kick, which I'm pretty sure never happened in any of the games except Whoa. maybe sort of. Whoa. You can create moves that both make sense for the sake of gameplay and are reasonably seen from their respective universe, but never actually occur in the source material for any characters. Oh, right, I need to do a max version charge. This is Fox Illusion and Firefox, and nearly everything Pac-Man does. Hollow Ten is sliding in as generic magical anime. Er, wow, that does, does no spell. damage. In wow. Shit, the people only defend because of Smash Brothers. Not for oh, any wow, stun time. for the series or her design. John Lee would be jealous. Uh, oh my. Sorry, you're you ended up as collateral. <laughs> Not my fault. Except this technically very much is. Pac-Man anymore. A nostalgia rep? A Namco rep? 
whenever someone utters the phrase, oh shit, here comes Pac-Man, what even comes to mind except that Bloodhound Gang song that made that line a cultural reference in the first place? In these off to a great start 2020s, the vast majority of hardcore gamers just know Pac-Man because I want he's Pac-Man from the old Pac-Man Very fans, badly. Ow. absolutely no appreciation for the fact that he had a ton of spin-offs, cartoons, and a top fucking 40 song about him called Pac-Man Fever, which means we often observe him just for what he is. And what he is in Smash is a fucking weirdo. He's a sentient yellow ball that summons fire hydrants and fruits. Oh, there's always the classic unwatchably uncreated YouTube writing and play of other nice. YouTubers that say shit like, Well, what if game characters were real? Mario does drugs and Link breaks into people's houses. But I think that middle school tier humor here is justified for Pac-Man. Because seriously, look at this fucking guy. Tell me this isn't the main pick of theater kids and hipsters. When writing this script, I audibly went, ugh, when I jotted down Robin's name. Do we really, really need three Fire Emblem Awakening reps? I mean, it was a hit seller, and Fire Emblem is carried into popularity by its absolutely obsessive fan base. but give me some fucking variety here. I understand that Chrom and Lucina are clones of existing characters, but so what? You got a franchise with about 12 mainline entries by Smash Brothers release, and you can't think of anyone iconic to pull from there? They certainly use them as fan service in the more modern games. How about Hector or Lin from Fire Emblem 7? Fire Emblem 7 was the first game official What are you? <laughs> People who played the original Fire Emblem games, like myself, would appreciate those characters as a good representation of when the series finally crossed over to the West. Or even better, how about you just don't fucking add as much Fire Emblem at all? Now that's a decision that would make everyone happy. Even Fire Emblem fans. Because for all their of <laughs> bullshit, Ramen is still technically an anime swordsman. And the roster is stacked with repetition as it is. This is just a pointless choice. I'm really feeling it! Does this appeal to you? Well, of course it does. It's me we're talking about. But this is all anyone is ever going to think about when they think about Shulk. Fuck your Monado arts. Fuck your obnoxious taunts. Fuck your sword reach. Fuck everything about you. Because to 99% of the player base, Shulk is, oh, the guy who took his fucking shirt off. Now, even though Sephiroth has been added with a ton of bare uh, I thought there was a cooking pot here. I was going to cook some more Shulk's stuff, but I'm fine with what I have. I probably. Banks because when he strips down, it just... Feels the fuck out of nowhere. Sephiroth is a deep, edgy katana wielder, showing up with his chest exposed by default anyway. Him casting off his Matrix outfit just conveys to the viewer that he's not fucking around anymore. And you're probably gonna have a blade endoscopy. And Kazuya is a scarred up motherfucker, implying years and years of hard battles punctuated by his ridiculous physique and obvious fighting stance. Shulk's swimsuit outfit is just downright embarrassing to anyone who hasn't played Xenoblade Chronicles. And it's still embarrassing to anyone who has, because, haha, <laughs> you just admitted that you played Xenoblade Chronicles. Holy shit, that's embarrassing. I don't particularly care how this blonde bastard plays or any of the 900 reasons to find him annoying. In my eyes, and unfortunately in my dreams, Shulk's defining characteristic is stopping the show to show off his abs. And not knowing how to get the show rolling again because his momentum grinder has only one setting. To a halt. Eh, I'm pretty disappointed. Don't get me wrong, if you're a cool kid, you rock the Koopa kids, especially Iggy, the best Koopa, but their implementation itself is pretty lackluster. Yeah, the clown car is an obvious addition, but why not take advantage of the paintbrush from Mario Sunshine? I suppose that's just a Bowser Jr. thing and not really a. When I first played this game, did anyone ever actually ask, ask if Tidon would be okay? He specifically asked us to ride his back. That means he's totally fine with it. It just feels like there's something missing here. Like there's more that can be done with this cast. Like a reference or a piece of their creation that's just not there. And that's because a lot of the time I forget they're even in the game. Do you know a lot of them used to use magic wands in their old games or something? I don't know, work some cabbage mm -hmm. shit for them. Do something. Not just what we got. This is about the part oh where I break down how I take my fat sticky movie on anyone who thinks Bowser Jr. But I can't even think of you how any of them are going to beat you anyway. It just feels like this gang of beat gangsters has one playstyle you see again and again no matter who's taking the wheel. And it's pretty easy to stop once figured out. They're going to run to one side, then they're going to either slam the cart into you or bait you with the cart and try to hit you with a projectile. If you don't commit to anything too hard, then hey, you win the game. It's not even worth talking about these miscreants when there's so much more pressing issues like, why didn't you do anything interesting with them? Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. 
No, 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 don't even say, don't even start, do not even talk, shut the fuck up. Oh my god, and they exactly respawn if you don't. Doing. Take this dog and dump for one potential way to be a piece of shit out of a hundred. You want him to lock in something of uh -huh. or something to troll someone else with, or something to stall the game, or something brain dead, or blah, 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 blah. Like and at least faces you. Okay then, it does nothing song. though. I don't Get those shots. I really don't. Duck Hunt is a character picked from pure malice and hatred. Nobody, and I mean nobody, plays Duck Hunt just to have a good time. You do it because you think it's mental warfare and your guns are going to rage bullets. You want me to roast the actual characters? Fine, it's a dog and a duck. Yeah. The dog laughs at you. I definitely need this new cycle just now. What? Play lame or oh man, there it goes. There goes your chance at ever making any friends. The bar is set very high for you, young man. So impress us. Unlike unstoppable hype trains like Captain Falcon and Donkey Kong, you have a lot of dumb tools in your belt. You spam projectiles? I'm not watching. You keep repeating just one combo? I'm uninstalling the game. And if I don't see a single parry all game, I'm calling your parents and telling them. To give you a behind the scenes sneak peek at what I do, I don't write these scripts in order. I kind of bounce around an alternation between characters where I immediately know what I want to say and ones where I have to do research and don't really know much about it. Cloud is the last character on this list that I'm writing because I just can't keep doing this anymore. I can't keep making anime jokes. It's stale. It's just too easy. It's really not fun at this point. But it's also not fair because Cloud is... Anime. Cloud is so see you back at fucking domain. anime. Cloud is the most anime thing on this list. And now I have to ask, what the hell even is anime anymore? Cloud has over-the-top multi-directional hair, but it's a suitable blonde instead of a whacktastic pink or whatever the dick-loving fuck the protagonist of Fire Emblem and Gage is supposed to be flaunting. He has an entirely impractical sword, but instead of shotgun slamming it like, say, Guts from Berserk, he whips it around at Mach 5 like it's made of paper. Plaid's got on a turtleneck sweater, which is wonderful if it gets a bit drafty, but he has no sleeves? Meaning he'll be cold anyway? His Advent Children outfit makes more sense, but that collar is even more fucking stupid, so never mind. At least... Cloud has charisma. Final Fantasy to me has always felt like an anime series that pushed itself so hard to be stupid that it stopped giving a shit. When I watch people play Modern Fire Emblem or Persona 5 or Kingdom Hearts, there's at least 30 or 40 points in the game where I laugh and I can't help myself from saying, holy shit, this is stupid. But with Final Fantasy, it all just wraps back around again into, yes, this is stupid, we don't care, in terms of becoming fun again. It doesn't try to pander waifus at you with disgustingly fake writing for lonely fucks to jerk off to. It doesn't make you the coolest guy ever with power fantasies because you have one million friends and somehow are the most charismatic life form possible despite the fact you only speak nine words a year. And it doesn't talk down to you like you're a babbling baby hoping desperately the next year you'll be allowed to use the big boy potty. By the way, those 
those last three lines are for the three respective series, Fire Emblem, Persona, and Kingdom Hearts I just mentioned, but we are getting to Joker and Sora, don't you worry. Let me just put it this way. If anime is a nonsensical, nihilistic art of throwing whatever the fuck you want at the wall and trying to make it impactful, Final Fantasy is the series that does all that, and then when people laugh at it, it laughs back and says, fuck yeah, this looks like shit, and that's what I wanted. I love this. For all you cloud players out there, I'm going to tip my imaginary virgin fedora, an accessory many of you probably have in kind, because you could have chosen much worse. This is not a bit. I am going to need someone to seriously try their hardest to defend Corrin in the comments, because I can't think of a single positive thing about this character. Anime character. Fire Emblem. Foot Fetishist. Scaly. Incest Supporter. Mid-tier. The list goes on and on and on, but with Corrin, I am drawing a complete and utter blank defending them. What hurts me the most of all is you would think a character who can transform into a huge, ferocious dragon would be more... anything. More interesting, more unique, more excitingly designed? Nope. Just blatant anime fan service character, boring player fantasy insert bullshit. Boring just absolutely sucks. I, I don't even have to figure out a way to put my feelings into words here, because even the Fire Emblem community knows that Korn absolutely sucks. Because there's tons of threads on this exact fact, and literal threads on how to avoid incest when playing Fire Emblem Fates because of how wonky the writing in that game is. We've been down a Bruh. long road, but I just don't even give a shit about Korn. Every single character on this list has some spark in my brain that says I should say something. Positive. Negative, a witty observation, a dead joke, it doesn't matter. I'm compelled to say something. But with Corrin, all I can think is, it would be better if you just didn't exist. And I struggle to think of anyone who would disagree with that. Hey, thanks for ruining Smash 4, I really appreciate that. What I appreciate more is watching your proximal interflangicles snap in half from all those combos you've been having to do. Key phrase in that sentence is have to do, by the way, because playing Bayonetta without learning combos is a masterful stand-up comedy act. We're all going to laugh at you. Something I find amusing, whether intentional or not, is how little Bayonetta seems to be sexualized in the context of Smash Brothers. If you do hours of sticky keyboard Googling like I do, you'll find plenty of thematic artwork involving Peach, Samus, Palutena, Daisy, etc. But Bayonetta's count is shockingly low for a character who comes from a game where you literally strip to perform attacks and have camera angles that look like this. What you then have is Bayonetta being the most antithetical Smash character in history. Smash is straightforward, relatively simple fighting game, while Bayonetta doesn't even work if you don't have an understanding of more advanced mechanics. And while Smash Brothers shows off the squeaky clean Nintendo trademark image, going so far as to even tone down Snake's butt cheeks, God rest their soul, Bayonetta takes every single frame of the 60 FPS to display some part of her anatomy. Bayonetta is a testament to fuck it, we'll do it the hard way, and an infinite spring well for psychological studies on people who intentionally make things difficult for themselves. A true king's choice for a high-class masochist. Consider her like a motorcycle. Extremely fun to ride, but you better know what the fuck you're doing if you get up to speed. What's up, kids? If your pastime includes mixing Adderall with Monster Energy Drink and fantasizing about elaborate ways to get back at your employer, then Inkling is the perfect character for you. Inkling players always think they're better than they are, and they don't realize just spamming the roller attack isn't a viable strategy, or just painting the ground in Splatoon isn't a very high skill requirement. This is because Inkling players are pure unbacked bravado. They'll flaunt left and right about their huge Twitter likes or how cute their dog is, but behind the curtain is a mess of unpaid parking tickets, dirty laundry on the floor of their room, and self-esteem made of glass. I think it's a symptom of Splatoon players thinking that they're in some sort of cult. That game just breeds elitism and an us-against-them mentality because they falsely believe they're playing some sort of unsung hero of Nintendo's dark underbelly. Newsflash, kiddos, Splatoon is stupidly popular, and as someone who reached the rank of Dog Queen in Splatoon 1, I'd stomp your shit in half. Whenever you play someone playing Inkling, be nice to them. Maybe even give them a non-sarcastic clap after they win a match, because God knows they need it. Let's laser focus on the big purple dinosaur for a minute. Ridley is a platinum member along with Bowser Jr., King K. Rool, Diddy Kong Wario, and either Animal Crossing rep in the League of characters you could argue should have been in Smash long before they got at it. But what makes it extra funny for Ridley is the seemingly childish excuses that prevented him from getting in despite 20 years of fans asking. Ridley was said to be too big to be in Smash Brothers. So big, there's a Know Your Meme page on the subject. 
Well, I guess the developers think Kazi is built like a tank, Terry is tucking muscles under his hat, and Wario is so fat as fat fuck ass because all three of them weigh more than Ridley, despite Ridley being like 15 hey, feet tall realized. in the Metroid games. Which is how we get the never-ending clown car of comedy that Ridley radiates around him. Wait, Ridley is what? such a strange product in the specific oh height God, generated so by stupid. Smash character reveals that him standing up in a taunt is cause for celebration. Ridley's pretty low tier and sees really small amounts of high-level play. But if you Wait. talk to a Ridley main, they just wipe the sweat from their brow and say, Thank God he made it in. Uh. Ridley mains would make fantastic monks or homeless people, because they will always be thankful. There could be a cataclysmic shift in the Smash ecosystem, launching game mechanics out the window and transferring actual electric shocks through controllers. And Ridley mains would just mutter, Oh, he's still in the game. Oh, bless, blessed Lord Jesus Christ who art in heaven, he's in the game. If you think kids these days are distracted with their AirPods and their TikToks and their phones and their Jollywags, try having a functional conversation with a Ridley player. Are they about to have a baby while their mother sick in the hospital? It doesn't matter. The conversation is going to be permanently locked on, dude, I am so grateful they added Ridley to Smash Brothers. Good for them, really. They can realistically ride this high for about the next five years. Until the next Smash Brothers game comes out, because they've already said they're not keeping all the characters in the next one, and you know for a fact that Ridley's gonna get cut, which will start this silly shit cycle all over again. Simon and Richter huh. players are the type of people that wear uh... Velcro shoes at age 35. Simon and Richter Richter players are the type to pour their cereal in after their milk. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to butter the bottom side of their bread. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to hide their knees in their shirt when watching a movie. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to refuse to poop in a public bathroom. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to say thanks, you too, when the waiter says enjoy your meal. Simon and Richter <laughs> players are the type of people to lose just one of their airpods I can't and never people find actually it. Say Simon that. and Richter That's players so are the type of people to leave the plastic film on their electronics to keep them clean. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to microwave leftover pizza. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to correct other people's grammar. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to chew with their mouths open. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to check their phone mid-conversation with someone. Simon and Richter players are the type of people to give an awesome series like Castlevania a bad name by doing the lamest shit on the planet. Alright, let me tell you something about this big chunky crocodile whenever I see him. When I was a little kid, I played Donkey Kong Country, and this guy was a real jerk. I'd play through the video game, and I'd run around as the big, funny, strong monkey and the tiny, silly, fast monkey. And he was really hard to beat, but I persevered, and I managed to figure it out. And then he came to Smash Brothers, and now, like, sometimes people will beat me with this guy, even though he's allegedly not very good. But I do like playing with him, but he... I don't know how good he is. I'm not very skilled in the world of tectonic plate movements, which is the slang that Smash players use when describing upper-level play. That's probably not true, but again, I'm not skilled in Smash Brothers enough to know. Then in the second game, Zara the fuck I played Diddy, Dixie Kong, should be Smash how to use the fishing pole attack and that's it and you spam it all game because you think it's super cool because your equally shitty friends don't know how to avoid it and you don't even really want to play smash brothers because it's not your kind of game but all your friends want to play it and they invited you to play it you feel kind of weird saying no and you don't really care and you just want to have fun with everyone and you know you will without a doubt be the first person to lose every single game and if you ever win a match it's going to be seen as a shocking surprise and Everyone's gonna reward you with applause and say you're really good at the game, but they're just trying to have sex with you. Many people were up in arms at the inclusion of Incineroar. They saw him as a waste of a slot, a poor character choice, and not strong enough to pull his worth in amongst the coveted Smash Elite. And I've gotta tell you... You are so goddamn wrong it hurts me. Let's look at the facts and pull the same rabbit out of the hat that I for some reason have to unearth every handful of videos. Pokemon is the highest grossing franchise of all time and through extrapolation the most popular franchise of all time. The series with the most representation in Smash is Super Mario at nine characters which is totally fine. Mario is the flagship Nintendo icon. Give him all the prominence he wants. But in second place is a tie between Pokemon, understandably so, and fire at one. Now, technically, Pokemon has 10 reps if you expand Pokemon Trainer to include Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard as their own entities, but in terms of roster of playable characters, it's a tie. But then things get even messier if you consider Robin, Corrin, and Byleth all have female versions, which are like 
sort of their own character. It it does not matter. There is a tie. For the sake of this argument, it's a tie. If Nintendo decided to take all the Fire Emblem characters who are from a series which has not even grossed one one hundredth of what Pokemon has, and then they replaced three of the Fire Emblem characters with Pokemon, everyone would agree this is a fantastic idea. And it's not even based on popularity. It's because the potential for Pokemon is so much higher. There are currently 1,000 Pokemon and counting, give or take, and you better fucking believe the vast majority of them aren't just anime swordsmen like a certain other franchise in this debate. Taking your pick of that litter is a smart game design choice without even a specific one in mind. Look at Pokemon Tournament, a Pokemon-only fighting game. There's a lot of easy acid flips you can pull from there and just cram into the game. Now let's look at who they did end up selecting throughout the years. Pikachu is the mascot of the company, obviously, and Pichu's an easy hit for being a clone. Jigglypuff gets a free pass because he was originally a clone of Kirby to work with the hardware limitations of the N64, and Jigglypuff's also pretty popular in its own right. Mewtwo is one of the most iconic Pokemon ever made and has a huge roster of moves to work with. Whether or not the animators, gameplay designers lived up to that potential, eh, but that's a conversation we already had. Pokemon Trainers 3 Pokemon represent the original starters, which is a big money decision. Lucario is extremely popular, hits the furry community in their wallets, and has a lot of potential for moves, and Greninja got pushed hard as fuck by the anime, and also gives us a ninja for the game, which I am perfectly okay with, because ninjas are fucking rad, and if you disagree, you're dumb, and the fact there's only two of them in the game is super stupid. So when it came time to add another Pokemon rep, what did we get? An evil professional wrestler. Let me say that again. A heel turn. Dirty. Low down. No good. Cheating. Ego stuffing. Professional fucking heavyweight champion of the world. Wrestler. And he's also a big dumb cat. Which means his haters are just afraid of getting pussy, and brother, that ain't me. Every single successful fighting game ever made is improved a hundred times over with a pro wrestling character. Zangief, Mike Hagar, King, Armor King, Tina Armstrong, DMX, Method Man, Ghostface Killa. Okay, those last three don't really count. If there's a synapse in your mind palace that fires off a single utterance of rejection towards Incineroar's inclusion, you have absolutely no taste and should feel bad about your opinions. I'm happier that this guy made it in the game than fucking Sora from Kingdom Hearts. That's how perfect of a choice I think he was gameplay-wise. And this takes any and all of my personal bias out of the equation. There were a lot of series to potentially gift us with pro wrestler characters, Characters, but to deliver one to us with such a great personality that fits his moveset, the game, and his design? Look at his fucking flaming championship belt for god's sakes. This is a god tier pick. Which gives me no pleasure when I finally bring it home by mentioning that if you're an Incineroar main, you'd probably be a Lucario or Wolf main if you weren't such a submissive bottom. What? Huh? I, I mean, I guess? Sure. Really? Really? I mean, he's famous, but it's but it's piranha plant. Like, why? Is this a is he a bad choice? I don't know. Yeah, that's that's him, all right. But I, I'm just fucking dumbfounded by this one. I don't know if I'm upset, pleased, nonplussed, anything. I, I'm just confused. What the fuck do you even say about piranha plants? It'd be the same as if they added boom, chain chomp, flop, lop, bob on or charging motherfucking chuck. It's like... I don't have a good argument for why it's a bad idea. Like, everyone knows Mario, and he's the face of Nintendo. Please but approach me. I don't want your sword to glitch why? out. Why? <laughs> sure. Persona 5 is about 30 oh, hours of good gameplay wrapped up in an overly inflated, drawn-out 100-hour package. And that perfectly describes Joker in Super Smash Bros. If you main Joker and aren't a pro, then you probably don't main Joker. You main Arsene. And if your whole skill level revolves around waiting for him to show up to save the day while bitching about how his broken ass keeps getting nerfs and oh, base form Joker's totally worthless, then why don't you go ahead and go back to your friendship simulator game that has a bunch of people in it who say 
in dialogue that no real human being on Earth would ever utter. In the wise words of that cat that everyone wants to have sex with, let's go to sleep, because it's a pretty safe bet to ignore anything and everything a Joker player has to say unless they have some tournament placements to their name. Their advice means nothing, and their perspective is fucked, because there's just something so boring about being the representation of pure anime cringe crossed with tear whoring for wins. Wake me up when your opinion in this game matters because I've got a lottery to play. Oh, and speaking of lotteries, you know that sound when you're playing Mario Kart and you run over an item block? That's what plays on loop in my mind whenever I play Hero. We're all here for our slot machines, our gambling fix. You open that RPG menu and you use all of your magic on it or you get the fuck out. Hero is in the game for the sole purpose of giving me a game to play with my grandson, who just dragged me away from my hot streak at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino's premier video poker machines. There may or may not be an entire character who exists outside of this four spell choice system, but I've never seen it because it doesn't matter spin to win is the name of the game and it's the only compelling reason here to pick not goku just know that if you win it's because of bullshit and if you lose it's absolutely deserved because of your bullshit enjoy the final appearance of banjo and kazooie everyone isn't it shocking criticism of the games industry when for a lot of characters these two included smash is a more accurate portrayal of who they are compared to their main series but don't blame these two blame rare because they don't know what the fuck to do with them Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was a very divisive game, with most people settling on it after all these years as, it's not a bad game, it's just a terrible Banjo-Kazooie game. But the impact it left on Rare never faded from memory. Take a look at the timeline after Nuts and Bolts was released. Over 10 years of remakes, connect garbage and Sea of Thieves. Now I like Sea of Thieves, I've got plenty of hours of my own. Holy shit, I did not know everyone hated it when Byleth came out that much. <laughs> Everyone's character. It's a character less popular than the sandbag you smack around in home run contest. People hate this bitch, and you can't deny it. Zone only, brain off gameplay style is a mighty way to piss someone off. But I think an arms rep is actually a really good choice. While it easily falls in the category of the character acting as an advertisement for the game, it's a game built on an interesting mechanic that perfectly fits the Nintendo Switch, and I think the devs could have easily found a way to balance it out and make it fun. But the question here, though, is... why Min Min? In Sakurai's presentation for Min Min, he said that ARMS doesn't really have a protagonist, and the producer of the game personally asked him to use Min Min as the fighter of choice. Huh. Is she really the best choice compared to the rest of the possibilities? I mean, we have to keep the choice unique so that it helps sell the fighter pass. Springman and Ribbon Girl, the characters featured in the Arms Reveal trailer, are currently out. They're pretty similar to Terry and Pyra and Mithra. We get a gone with Lola Pop, who from my research on the game seems to be the most popular character in the Arms community. Her signature even helps remind you of her rocket tits, and there's no other clowns in the roster as far as I know, well, except for Byleth. It's a slam dunk idea. <laughs> how about Twintel? She's a famous movie star who uses her hair to attack. Lots of interesting and fun ideas with that one. Look at Sarah Bella from Skullgirls for a good example. 
Oh, oh, and, and Helix. Helix would be a good fit. He's a big wiggly jelly monster made in the laboratory. That's super unique. But they went with Min Min, a ramen shop owner who has noodle hair, martial arts skills, and dragon arms. It's just so interesting. Sakurai was told specifically by one of the insider reps at Nintendo Entertainment Planning and Developing Division that they should use Min Min. Maybe they were trying to capture a certain market. A market of consumers that tends to have a pretty big sway on mass media success in the modern globalized world. Okay, now this is, this is absolutely me stereotyping here, but maybe a country whose market is just like Japan in a lot of these ways. They tend to utilize Asian cultural items like ramen, martial arts, and dragons. A country, hang on, a country that has already overtaken the Steam user base as the most popular country on there. And, and is quickly oversweeping the entire it's video game market. Remaining. I have faith in you. Could that be? <laughs> oh! Canada! Oh boy, here we go. Here we fucking go. Minecraft is back again to topple the video game industry one more time. Minecraft is the highest selling video game of all time, and it's not even close. It outsells second place, Grand Theft Auto V, by over 50 million units. So how funny is it that Minecraft asserted dominance on Smash Brothers the instant it showed up on the scene? Steve is the talk of the town in the Smash community right now, and he's firmly in the top of tiers, if not the best character in the game. And this is a character technically played more by your seven-year-old cousin than by you. Steve currently has a glitch being developed right now, putting serious weight on him getting banned from tournaments for being really good. While also being a character that generates more YouTube videos than everyone else featured in this game combined. Steve's gameplay is lame, encourages solid air play styles, has options to do anything, and allows you to screech on them while kicking someone's ass. You can scan Smash Brothers forums and subreddits for hours and find evil threads of players calling for Steve to be run out of town, and Steve players can be sent death threats just for playing the game. And all of this for a blocky dude who makes more money selling merch than some entire franchise is represented in Smash. The irony here is beyond delicious. It's scrumptious, decadent, and dare I say yummy. If any character deserves everything he brought to the table, most importantly the hatred, it's Steve. Or you don't fuck with Sephiroth. In terms of milking the sloshy dreams of every bright-eyed PlayStation 1 user or Japanophile, he checks off every box for cool character, uses a katana, dresses in all black, has long flowing yet still pointy anime style hair, is designed around iconography from Christianity, has a huge over the top memorable theme song, transforms into an incomprehensible full god, and the list goes on. But something cool about Sephiroth they never mention is his hollow bones. Because he's a bird. Why wouldn't he be a bird? He flies around, has a wing, and weighs next to nothing. The following <laughs> characters are heavier than Sephiroth in Smash Brothers. Shulk, Pit and Dark Pit, Pac-Man, Ness and Lucas, Villager, Diddy Kong, Olimar, Sora, and Kirby. A grown-ass man with a rippling eight-pack and a sword the size of my penis weighs less than some children, a monkey, a child who floats, and a living balloon. While I was a bit bummed Sephiroth came in when we already had a Final Fantasy rep, I really can't be too upset. He's an absolutely standout character from a massive franchise, and he's so actually cool that even anime haters like him. I just wish the rest of the guys would stop calling him a bird. Sephiroth does so much work at Patty's Pub, he really deserves more respect. I mean, nicknaming him Sweet Seph? Really? That's stupid. Oh, hey, look! It's the Zelda and Sheik transformation gimmick! Except this time it's on the most generic character design ever possible! An anime swordswoman. But, but even worse, anime swordswomen that are just blatant advertisements to buy their game. Tell me, anyone out there watching at home, did you want Hyra and Mithra in this game? Did you really out of anyone you could have had otherwise? Because chances are you didn't. 
Chances are, every reaction to the reveal was a fuck are these two? Because as it turns out, as of their release in Smash Brothers Ultimate, Hyra and Mithra were only in one video game, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Your stupid shit alarm sounding already? We already have a Xenoblade Chronicles wrapped in the form of shirtless boy, and every other character in the DLC bracket is either from a movie or a series, and actually an iconic video game. Close fire of one. Yeah, Fire Emblem is terrible, but we've already talked about it. The problem with these two isn't just that they're uninteresting, bland, overly specific, forgettable, or recycled, giving embarrassing, sure the job. The problem is that they happen to be the final death nail in the coffin for the good ends of this. There's only two Smash characters left on this list. Thank God for my voice. Kazuya and Sora. Now, both of those two absolutely deserve to be in Smash. With Tekken being a massive, long-running franchise of easy source material to pull from that perfectly complements the Street Fighter and King of Fighters reps, and Kingdom Hearts having the largest crossover fan base of anime dweebs, dribbling children, and my hobbies are my personality gamers, which is the perfect demographic for Smash. And also, Sora was the most requested character of all time from all the polls, whatever. So to close out my well-deserved shit talk on these two, I'm just gonna list who we Dang could it. have had instead of these no fucking no. for a game that will make most people watching this say, wait a no minute, wait, fun. wait, wait, wait they, made a, they made a sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles? I mean, they're not from the first game? We're gonna start with Nintendo-owned characters, which means that these characters would have had zero issues in being added to the game. If any of these reminders make oh, you angry, <laughs> blame Hyra and Mithra. <clears throat> Luigi, Gino, Paper Mario, Bandana Waddle Dee, Pixie Kong. Why? I hate, heaven I hate this mod Ring sometimes. Fit trainee. And as previously discussed, like half of every Pokemon ever made. As for third parties, Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet and Clank, Spyro, Dante Virgil or Nero from Devil May Cry, the Doom Slayer or Old School Doom Guy, Rayman, Isaac from Golden Sun, Shantae, Shovel Knight, Hollow Knight, Monster Hunter, literally anyone from Guilty Gear, pretty much anyone from Resident Evil, and any of the well-known characters from Mortal Kombat. Majima from Like a Dragon. Now, side note, the creator of the series said he doesn't want Kiryu in Smash because he doesn't like the idea of Kiryu beating up women. But he never said anything about Majima, and if you know the series, that would absolutely be a character. Lloyd from the Tales series, 2B, Phoenix Wright, and about a hundred other characters from series that were already added that aren't fucking Pyra and Mithra. And finally, Agumon and Master Chief. But let's be honest, for those two, that would never, ever, ever happen. Like, I would rather that they reveal that those two are never getting in than they reveal that Pyra and Mithra did get in. So, uh... Yeah, fuck these guys. Beating on someone whose mission is to just beat ass. I mean, yeah, difficult. they are very fuckable. Possible goal. And that's because this guy is just a wee bit too strong. So a lot of the flex doesn't come from his sick pythons. It's just getting one lucky hit mid ass beat. Watching a now master Kazuya at work is like a world renowned glass blower putting together a piece. It's a delicate, volatile art cascading into something utterly fragile but. Basically, that only applies to a small, small subset of the proposition. The rest of you suck absolute ass and rely on pure raw luck damage to carry your ass out of bad spots. Remember when Ganondorf was all manufactured hype? Well, imagine Ganondorf except you give him all the tools to actually get in and bust some nuts. And then you gave him even more tools because you were having a closeout sale on really good shit. Now, that's a much more interesting thing, isn't it? But it's also where heavy privilege now starts to come. If you're unfamiliar with Smash Brothers and fighting games in general, heavy privilege isn't just a system to divide who eats the most fried chicken in Golden Corral. Heavy privilege dictates that because a heavy character has a harder time approaching their opponent, moving around the stage, and playing the neutral game, they deserve to hit harder. Kazuya hits like six trucks having sex with a Mini Cooper, but he's also got armor on his moves, and stuns, and all sorts of safe attacks, and movement options. You fucking name it. Kazuya is a heavy sandwich made from the best cuts of meat from all the fat boys. And it shows. I'm quite proud of you for choosing a character who has one strategy of Come here, boy, I'm gonna whoop them cheeks. But you're also absolutely dead last on the tournament of characters that work in them. It's also Blurry Rush Fodder. Shit house. We need the full 
honest truth on this one. If you're a King Bronze fan, stick with me. You're not gonna like it, but the adults are talking. I fucking hate you, King Bronze. I can't stand it. I really, truly cannot stand it. It was a series that, from top to bottom, I mean, the Ganon curve, Water Blight at least, I mean, because Wind Blight wasn't. That was epic. That's a good idea. But in my combination of personal playthroughs and gameplay games in the world, I struck in a series where I put the cover by monitor and my parents walked in. And I regularly play hentai games. The gameplay is overrated. The dialogue is abysmal. The usage of the source material is mostly okay, but often an uninspired retelling of the original plot. Oh my god, why do they get launched so far?
forces that you just can't get to play. Enjoy the activity of playing the game with your friends enough that you couldn't give less of a shit if you win or lose. In a game with 40 different franchises represented by the playable characters and way more cameos, you circumvent even choosing just one. The simplest explanation of your choice comes from, oh, it's a game I played in the past. Instead, you aim to spin the wheel and find out what'll happen, and then you just roll. No, don't you. Good on you. You got charisma checked while playing a social video game, and you passed with flying colors. The second option. Select is often whipped out when games are one sided. Are you shitting on someone so hard that they have to tell the tournament organizer that they want to cancel their pre registration for next year? Don't drive the point any further by suggesting they should have been aborted by whooping their ass with literally anybody. The random button represents two sides of the same unwashed paper coin. Some people play Smash like every other game in their life. They'll crack into it every now and then, but if something else is better grabbing their attention, well, it's time to move on and. Gang decides they just want to pop some stocks and smash bros. And then there are others who consider the game a never ending ladder climb. A digital chessboard where any and all ineffective options must be. And whoever you choose says a lot about who you are. And there's always internal debates on striking the balance of your choice between the desire to win and the desire to pick your favor. It's a very important lesson to learn from the flight of this. How do I put it right here? It says game 10 of the box. See? Made for children. Children 10 and older. Ask your parents' permission if you're 9 or younger. There's probably plenty of 9 year olds, 8 year olds who are parents who really give shit. This is a children's video game for kids. For small kids. Alright, so anyway, here's the tier list. Made rating for choice of name from 1 to 5. It's not based on like tears or anything, it's purely based on what I consider to be the excitement factor when you choose that character. How much people like to watch you play, how much people like you to play that character. It, it's popularity in terms of, you know, how, how much people like your character. I think that's just my fucking opinion. I don't care. I don't believe that. What the? Oh my god, he's healing more often than I can freaking shoot him. And look how far away he gets launched. I literally can't attack him. After stunning him. They're literally anything. I think my only real strategy here is to just beat him up quickly. Don't let the fight drag on for too long. Why Vanaboris? Oh, also I should probably use... Yeah, something like this.
that well. Can I make this fight not suck ass? Careful, that spear has a long reach.
What the hell is going on?
so hard to make. Try this one more time. Wow, what the fuck? This is not fun. This is not difficult. This is just time consuming. Chris, you could have saved me. I don't know how, but you could have. I'm not saving you. I'm teabag my grave. Alright, but now time to take care of these chicken guys. For some reason, I think these big chicken guys. Where's chicken from? Is that an actual bird? Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I used to go chicken eat, 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 e
need to know this is very important information. But yeah, the Yellow Priest stop having to kill Bulgari and also eventually Oh, that's my favorite enemy. Do not attack them. I love shell guns. They're so cute. Yeah, they're so cute. They're so cute. Look, it's coming with them. I love shell guns. Also, I'm not going to choose Kate here because he's 
lights up and those out Oh my god, that was so difficult and boring for all of the wrong reasons. I feel like I'm just gonna disable this harder boss thingy. I really feel like I should just do that. Cause this just isn't fun. Also, have you ever seen those things of like how strong Ben 10 is? Because apparently he could like beat them. No, Chris! Oh my gosh! I mean, sorry. alien acts is a no, thing and he can turn into that alien. You could not beat him. So, yes. You're probably right. No, I did it too! Are you kidding me? But it's okay. Yoshi can do all the work we need. Just look at him go. Absolute mastery over himself. But yeah, just some more murdering, some chicken dee 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 dees. Now that's gonna be stuck in my head. It's just like such a good thing to say. Where did they get those mech suits from? Because when you destroy the chicken's mech suit, it becomes just a little chicken. Maybe they're like passed down from generation to generation. So it can smell like sweat and gross, and they just give them to their offspring. I... You don't really have to mention that. Alright, back to Pokemon Trainer. I wish I could play as Pokemon Trainer. He's so much fun to me, but I have to be Lucas. Yes! Do not kill the shell puck! You know, Chris, do you want to... ...never be invited to an easy speezy speedrun again? Well, I didn't kill him, to be fair. I only normally wounded him. Yeah, you destroyed his shell! <laughs> yes! Which is such an important part of him. Look, I hate to break this to you, but if you want to continue in this run, we have to kill this shell pod, so I'll do the dirty work. Or you can just keep him alive and we can stay here forever. Oh, gosh, I feel like that'd get really boring for the people watching. <laughs> I mean, we can cut it. We can just put the highlights. Also, it's these guys. These are the people with the long necks. What do you mean you can't pick up any more of this? And we're just gonna go past them. See you what? later. Oh. Bye, Squirtle. But we're just gonna go past them because that's kind of what we do for all the enemies in this game. Also, here's a part that I die at. All the Hi, time you know what? I'm gonna go change the Dark Army Resurrection. I'm done for today.